So we've seen the relationship between the change in potential or the voltage change and the change in the electrical potential energy, which can be written as delta V is equal to delta U on Q. So using this equation, we can actually use the voltages to work out the change in potential energy as we assemble a charge distribution. So now as long as we consider assembling our charge distribution from charges which were initially at rest and finally at rest, then there's going to be no change in the kinetic energy of the charges. And so the total change in energy is in fact going to be equal to that change in potential energy. So to illustrate what we mean by this, let's imagine um, assembling some charge distribution such as this one. Now let's place this first charge here. When we place the first charge, there are no other charges there, so there is no electric field. So we don't need to do any work against that electric field. So there is no change in the electrical potential energy when we place the first charge. However, when we now move a second charge into the field of that first charge to some final point, we can work out the voltage at the point where this second charge ends up due to this first charge. And using that voltage, we can work out the change in potential energy of the system as we add that second charge. Now, if we add a third charge, we can work out the voltage at the point it's added to from both the first charge and the second charge. And from those, we can work out the change in potential energy which is needed to add that third charge. And we can keep on going until we've built up our entire charge distribution. And then when we sum all those contributions, we'll have the total energy it took to, as to assemble this charge distribution. So this is actually probably easiest to see with a worked example. So let's have a look at one of those now. So the question is, give an expression for the total energy required to assemble this configuration of charges. And then in the second part, we're asked how much energy would be required to place a charge minus Q at the center of the square from an infinite distance away. Okay, so to solve this first part, what we'll need to do is imagine placing the charges one at a time. So let's number them. We'll call this one one, two, three, and four. And this is the order that we're going to place these charges in. So initially there's no other charges there and we're placing this plus four Q charge. Now, because there's no other charges there, there's no electric field. And so we don't need to do any work against any electric field in order to place it. So no energy is required to place the first charge. Okay, now we're going to place the second charge. The second charge is plus Q, and we're going to place it here at a distance A above this first charge. So we know that the change in energy, let's call it U2, just to show that this is for placing the second charge, is given by the charge that's being placed times the voltage at which it's being placed. This is how we can calculate the, poten the change in the potential energy. So in this case, the charge which is being placed is just the plus Q. So that's plus Q. And then the voltage, that's due to this charge here. So remember that the voltage around the point charge is given by KQ on R. So in this case, this is K, Q is 4Q, and then the distance between these two is A. So we can write this as 4 K Q squared on A. So we now have this charge of plus Q here. So what we're going to do now is place our third charge. So it's going here. This distance here is A. The distance between these two is A. So if we consider this distance here, because we've got A here and A here, this would be the square root of A squared plus A squared. So that would be root 2A. So if we want to calculate how much energy we need to place there, we can once again just use QV. This first Q, this is the charge that is being placed. So that's the plus 2Q. And then we've got voltage. And we know that voltages obey the law of superposition. So if we work out the voltage due to this first charge 
and then sum on the voltage due to this second charge, that's going to give us the total voltage at this point here. So due to this first charge, we've got K and then Q, that's 4Q for the first charge, and then the distance in this case is root 2A. And then we've got the voltage due to the second charge, which is K times plus Q, and then the distance between those is A. So we can write these as K, and then we've got Q squared on A. Let's pull that out as a common factor. And then we've got 8 on root 2 plus 2. So now we've got this third charge plus 2Q here, and now we're considering placing this fourth charge down here. So in order to do that, we'll have this change in potential energy to place the fourth charge. The fourth charge has a charge of plus 3Q, so we've got plus 3Q. And then it's going into the voltage caused by this first charge, which is 4Q. So K times 4Q, and the distance from it is A. And then this second charge, this distance here is also root 2 on A. So that's KQ times root 2. And then we've got this third charge. So that's K times 2Q on A. So this is equal to, we'll pull the same factor out the front because that'll make it easier later. And so here we've got 3 times 4. So that's 12. And then we've got 3 on root 2. And then we've got the 3 times the 2, so plus 6. And then to get the total energy to assemble it, we need to sum up the energy to place the first one plus the second one plus the third one plus the fourth one. So U1 plus U2 plus U3 plus U4. And when we're doing that, let's pull this common factor out the front. Now to place the first charge, there was no energy, so that's 0. To place the second charge, we've got 4 times our kq squared on A. To place the third charge, we've got 8 on root 2 plus 2. And then to place the fourth charge, we've got 12 plus 3 on root 2 plus 6. So this is equal to kq squared on A times 4 plus 2 plus 12 plus 6, which gives us 24. Then plus 8 plus 3, which is 11 on root 2. So that's our expression for how much energy is required to assemble this charge distribution. Now in the second part of the question, we're asked how much energy would be required to place a charge of minus Q in the middle here. Now this distance from here to here is root 2A. So this distance to this midpoint is root 2a on 2, so that's equal to a on root 2. So you can see each of this minus q is the same distance from each of these charges. So if we want to calculate how much energy it's going to cost us to place this minus q here, we can use our equation u is equal to qv, where q is the charge being placed, so that's minus q in this case and V, that's the voltage at this point at the middle of the square. And we can just use this expression here for the voltage around a point charge to work that out for each of these point charges here. So this first charge is K and Q is 4Q, and then the distance is A on root 2. And then we've got the second charge, so that's K times Q, because this is its charge, times A on root 2. And then we've got the third charge, which is K times Q2 over A on root 2. This is on root 2. And then the fourth charge, which is plus K times 3Q over A on root 2. So let's pull some common factors out the front again. We've got the Q out the front already. Um, we can pull a Q out of each of these terms, the K out of each of these terms, and the A on root 2. So we can write this as minus KQ squared, and the root 2 can come up the top, and we've got the A down the bottom. And so this is times 4 plus, here we've got 1 plus 2 plus 3, 
So 4 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3, that is equal to 10. So this is equal to minus kq squared times 10 root 2 over a. So we've got a negative number. So it's telling us that um, it, we get work out if we did this. Now that makes sense because we're placing a negative charge in the middle of a charge distribution which has been constructed from positive charges. So we'd expect to be releasing energy in that process.